What's up everybody, Daniel here. Now I'm about to show you guys how I ink on Photoshop. All my artwork and stuff like that. People ask me how to do it, so I'm going to show you how to do it. First thing I like to do for when I'm doing anything is turn off some bitching ass music to uh, get the creative juices flowing. And now I'm um, just up to Photoshop. And right now I'm going to drag and drop the scanned artwork on into Photoshop. Right now. I usually scan it like around 300 dpi I think, 300 to 400, somewhere around that ballpark. And I just hit F on the keyboard to uh, put it in full screen mode, it's cooler that way. And uh, hit Control L to bring out the levels and make it a little darker by sliding it to the right a little bit. And when you're happy with that, just hit OK. And uh, unlock this layer and create two new ones. Now drag one beneath your artwork and fill that puppy with white, hitting Alt Backspace or Alt Delete. And uh, rename the artwork Art if you want and call it whatever the fuck you want, it doesn't really matter. Or you don't even have to call it anything. Uh, I think it just helps out a little bit. Um, call the inks Inks, and again, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter. But that's what you're going to be inking on. So Inks is probably an appropriate name for it. Now you want to drop the opacity down of the artwork. From anywhere to 40 to 50, somewhere around there. I think I choose 48. Yeah. This looks good so far. Now you click on inks. And we're gonna zoom in here on this guy's face. He's like a dead guy with his brain sticking out, and, and there's like wolves and stuff. He's in the snow, with like winter wolves. So make sure you got your black as your foreground color. Select your brushes. We're about to change some levels for your um, tablets. So click on Windows brushes or Window brushes. Then click on Shape Dynamics, as you see there. And I'll put the size jitter to uh, pin pressure, so I set a pin pressure. Uh, my angle jitter is set a pin pressure too, but I'm not really sure if that matters. Uh, mine is that that way, so it probably doesn't matter. So I don't know. Who cares? So yeah, I'm going to start inking now, make, but do make sure you're on that ink slayer because then you're going to be drawing on your line art and you don't want that because you're going to function it, so don't do that. Just make sure. So yeah, just start off slow. Take it easy. It's sped up a little bit, so it looks like I'm going faster than I All right, actually am. Normally, um, when you're doing parts like this for the nose, where it's just like full, filled in black, there's uh, usually markers on your line art to uh, let you know where that black is going to be. Uh, little just indications of where you know that the deep shadows are. But since I do my own art and my own inking, I know where all that stuff is going to go. It's all in my head, so. All I really need, I don't really need the markers and shit, but naturally you would see that on other people's artwork, especially in comic art and stuff like that. It's very, um, very keen stuff. I fucked up right there on the chin, but I'll just delete it and uh, do another pass at it. If you don't feel comfortable with uh, whatever you just did, just delete it and shit. It's Photoshop, you know. I like it. And I don't like to uh, stick in one spot for too long, especially when I'm doing inking. Uh, when I'm painting, not so much. Like, I kind of like to concentrate on certain things, but uh, when I'm inking, I like to jump around and shit. Concentrate on different parts of the artwork. Keep shit fresh. I'm not going to be doing the entire piece uh, right here because that would fucking take forever. But I'm just doing, uh, concentrating on this guy's face, the dead guy. As you can, as you can see, I'm not really sticking too close to what uh, the art is. I like to like just expand on it. I think in this stage of my artwork process, I like to beef up whatever it is I've drawn and stuff, and uh, make it pop out more. I think just with random lines here and there just makes it weird and shit. I think I don't know. I think that's more depth. Like how I'm doing the lips right now. That isn't on the artwork, the original artwork, but 
I uh, just something you know creative that I thought would be pretty cool if I added it to it. It's a good time to experiment, I think, during the stage, it's especially since uh, nothing is finalized, uh, nothing is set in stone. You can delete everything if you if you end up not liking it. You know, you have a lot of freedom. Thanks to Photoshop. And I'm also, I also like to add random black spots, especially with my gory, gorier stuff, because I don't know, I think it adds a little bit more ugliness to it, it makes it a little bit more badass. It's random black spots everywhere. <laughs> and just added more lines here and there, giving a little bit more shape to the chin overall. Give me more structure. A lot of people ask as well how um, how to properly shade things, shade your drawing, shade your art to be more more realistic and stuff like that. And honestly, I don't really know to be honest because. Uh, I still have trouble with it myself. It's kind of hard. But uh, my advice is just to pay attention to everything, especially your surroundings and stuff like that, and watch how light hits objects and how shadows are reproduced that way. And read, a, read too. There's a lot of good, helpful books out there. And just overall knowledge of things and what you're drawing, especially anatomy and stuff like that, will definitely help out in creating some realistic shading and shadows and stuff. But, you know, it's whatever. It's whatever your style is, really. I, I frankly don't really care. I just like to wing it. If it comes out good, it comes out good. Putting more black spots everywhere. And I start on the teeth. Setting, you know, lines. Just, just inking them in, just to show you guys. It's pretty rough here. Nothing really. That, you know. Nothing I'm gonna keep, obviously. Just, just a little quick little ink tutorial for you. And uh, yeah, I just skipped the video right here because it was kind of long, so I had to cut it. So don't freak out, I just skipped it. So now I'm showing you um, what I got so far. Just zoom out a little bit. Now uh, there's a wolf, happy little doggy. And right now we're gonna, I'm gonna deselect the, or turn off the line art to show you guys fully better what I got as far as ease. And now I'm gonna show you guys how to flatten it when the, when the entire piece is done. Of course, mine isn't, but I'm gonna show you guys what to do. Firstly, just drag and drop the ink, the well, the, I mean the artwork, into the little trash bin at the corner, just to lay in the full layer. And I'll select your inks and hit Control E, and it'll flatten it for you. I'll merge the two, pretty much. And there you go, your artwork's done. You know uh, that's how you ink it. The reason you do that is because, well, what you're drawing on, or you're inking on, I mean, doesn't have anything else but black. You're just drawing on black and everything else is all pixels. So you need that uh, background, that bottom layer, as the background for it. Especially when you're dropping the opacity down, as you can see on the line art. It just shows through the pixels. So you need the white. So, you know, so it's like a definite background. And another way you can do it is just um, drag the inks on top of the background, you just flatten it like that. So that way you got your original line art and your new inks ready to go. Just bring up the opacity for that artwork. So you don't see it through it anymore. But yeah, there you go. That's pretty much it. Hope you guys liked it. Um, hope you guys, I'll type you guys anything. If it did, if it didn't, fuck it. It's my first tutorial, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I ink and shit, so. Thanks a lot for um, watching, and thanks for sticking around. See you guys later.